Hello everybody. Today we're going to cover some of the basics of a WX Widgets application. The first thing we're going to do is create a subclass of the WX App class. Now we'll need to include the WX Widgets precompiled header files. If the precompiled header files aren't available, we'll need to include the regular header files. Now we'll subclass the WX app class. We'll need to create an on init method, which basically serves as our application's entry point. For now, we'll just call the parent class on init method. The implement app macro creates a main function as well as an instance of our app class. The declare app macro makes a convenience function wx get app available to us. WX get app returns an instance of the app class, which was created by the implement app macro. Next, we'll subclass the WX frame class. Our constructor uses the same parameters as the WX frame class, so I'll just go ahead and copy them. Don't forget to delete the default parameters in the CPP file. And we'll need to pass those parameters to the WX frame class constructor. Now we'll need to create a unique ID for our window.
WX widgets reserves the IDs between WX ID highest and WX ID lowest. Setting our ID to WX ID highest plus one ensures that we won't have any conflicts with WX widgets defined IDs. Okay, now all we have to do is create our window and run it. Let's go back to app.cpp and include our header files. And now we'll need to create an instance of our window. The first parameter is the window's parent, which in this case will be null pointer because the main window is a top level window. The second parameter is the ID we created. And the third parameter is the window's title. The underscore function just tells WX widgets that the string needs to be translated. And finally, we'll just need to call show on our window. All right, that's it. So let's go ahead and run it. And there you go. That's how you create a basic WX widgets application. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.